Okay, so today I want to start chapter 10. After finish, finishing chapter 4, we don't have to do chapters 5, 6, 7, 8, or 9. Okay, so systems of equations and inequalities. In 10.1, I want to review systems of two linear equations in two variables. So there are three methods that we discussed in Math 1150 Immediate Algebra for solving systems of three equations through three variables, naming the graphing method, the elimination method, and then the substitution method. So basically, we're going to learn how to solve the system of equation ax plus b1y equals c1, a2x plus b2y equals c2. So we have two linear equations, meaning we have two lines. So graphically speaking, the first method, which is called the graphing method. Graphing, graphingly speaking, I will be graphing two lines in the plane. Okay, graph the first line, graph the second line, and you will have three different choices. The first is when the two lines intersect. The system is called independent and we have one solution when the two lines are parallel we have no solution and the system is called inconsistent when you draw the first line and then the second line is right exactly the same line so we have infinite points of intersection or infinite solutions and the system is called dependent and all these steps, don't panic, they are on the handout that's part of chapter 10. So you can see it there. So to, the graphing method for solving a system of two equations. You graph both lines on the same rectangular system of course. If the lines intersect, you have one solution and the system is independent. If the lines are parallel, we have no solution and the system is inconsistent. If the lines are the same, we have infinite solutions and the system is dependent. So let's see an example about that. So if we say solve by graphing, that means you have to solve by graphing. You gotta follow the directions, okay? So if you have three x plus y equals three and six x plus two y equals 12. So we're gonna graph each equation. We're gonna make a t-chart we can plug in any x we want. I'm going to plug in a 0. If x is 0, then y is 3. If y is 0, 3x equals 3, so x is 1. So I got 0, 3, and 1, 0. We get a line through these two points. And this is the line 3x plus y equals 3. And then the second line, 6x plus 2y equals 12. Again, we make a t-chart. If x is 0, 2y equals 12, so y is 6. If y is 0, 6x equals 12, so x is 2. So we have 0, 6, 4, 5, 6. And then 2, 0. And it looks like the two lines are parallel. And we can actually confirm that algebraically by finding the slope, right? The slope of this line is negative 3, y equals mx plus b. And the slope of this line, 2y equals negative 6x plus 12, y equals negative 3x plus 6. So you can see they have the same slope, different y-intercept, so they must be parallel, okay? So we have parallel lines, and we have no solution. And the system is inconsistent. All right, the graphing method is the best visual method, but the problem is if the lines cross, sometimes we won't be able to find exactly where they cross if it's a non integer solution. Okay, so that's why we're going to discuss two algebraic methods besides the graphing method. The second method is the substitution method. which will give you the solution no matter what. And 
here's the substitution method. So I'm going to write down an example and we'll go over the steps. So I don't have to write the steps. Solve by substitution. 2x minus y e3, x plus 2y equals 5. So the first step in doing substitution is choose one equation and isolate one variable. This equation will be considered as the first equation. So it looks like I'm going to choose the second equation and isolate x. So x equals negative 2y plus 5. This is what we call the first equation. Substitute the solution from step one into the second equation and solve for the variable in the second equation. I'm going to take whatever it presents and plug it in the, the second equation. So 2 times negative 2y plus 5 to minus 1 equals 3. So we plugged in negative 2y plus 5 for x. Now we're going to solve for y. So we have negative 4y plus 10 minus y equals 3. Negative 4y minus y is negative 5y. Pull the 10 down. Track the 10. Negative 5y is negative 7. And divide the negative 5. So y is 7 over 5. And don't get tired and stop here. We're solving for x and y. This is 50% of the answer. So 50% of the credit. So the next step obviously is... Use the value found in step two, substitute it in the first equation and solve for the second variable. So we're gonna go back to the first equation and we're gonna plug in y equals seven over five. So that's negative two over one times seven over five plus five, which is negative 14 over five plus Five over one is 25 over five because I want to times by five so I can have the same denominator. Negative 14 plus 25 is 11, so 11 over five. And my solution is 11 over five for x and seven over five for y. And the last step is to check it. You don't have to, but you're welcome to check that back into both equations. Okay, so that's the substitution method and there's so the substitution method should be used when either x or y are already isolated or like, like equation 2 can be easily isolated. You have 1 in front of x, so it's, it's very easy to isolate x, okay? Now, if it's hard to isolate x or y, then there's a third method, which is called the elimination or addition method. the elimination or addition method and this method this method should be used when when both equations are general form like ax plus by equals c the coefficients of x or the coefficients of y are opposites like if you have here a and negative ax because when you add x will get eliminated that's when you should use elimination if you have a choice okay so write both equations in general form you, you want it to be nothing should be isolated unlike substitution multiply one or both equations by an integer so that one term has opposite quotient in the two equations here's an example so if i have 2x minus 3y equals 3 and 3x plus 2y equals 5. Obviously here, we don't want to use substitution because it's not easy to isolate x or y. We're going to have a fraction. What we're going to do, like it says here, multiply one or both equations by an integer so that one term has opposite coefficients in the two equations. You can see the y's have opposite coefficient, uh, opposite signs, negative and plus, but these are not the same, 3 and 2. So we want to make both of them the same number, opposite signs. The least common multiple of 3 and 2 is 6. So we're going to times the top equation by 2 to have a 6y and the bottom equation by 3 to have a 6y. One of them is negative. So let's do the math. That's 4x. If you, if you times the 2 and then minus 6y and 2 times 3 is 6. 3 times 3x is 9x plus 6y is 15. Now... Add the equations to produce a single equation with one variable. 
we should never add unless we are sure one of them at least one of them is going to get eliminated so that's 13 x 6 plus 15 is 21 by the 13 x equals 21 over 30 okay and now it says substitute the variable back into one of the equations and solve for the other variable so you can take this and plug it into either one of them I'll just pick the second one so x equals 21 over 13 we're gonna plug it in So we're going to plug it in, so 3 times 21 over 13 plus 2i equals 5, that's 3 times 21 is 63 over 13 plus 2i equals 5, subtract 63 over 13, so 2i is 5 over 1 minus 63 over 13. So we're going to times by 13 to get the same denominator. So that's going to be 65 minus 63. That's 65 minus 63 is 2 over 13. So divide by 2, meaning timesing by 1 half. So 1 over 13. So we got the answer. 21 over 13, 1 over 13. Now, there's another way of finding y. Remember how we eliminated y to get x the first time? We're done, but I want to show you another method. We could have eliminated x to solve for y, and I think it's easier than getting all these fractions done with. So, in order to eliminate x, we would have to times the top equation by negative 3 and the bottom by 2. So, we would have negative 6x and positive 6x. If we do that, we would get negative 6x plus 9y, negative 3 times 3y equals negative 9. And then 2 times 3 is 6x plus 2 times 2 is 4y equals 10. Cancel out, 13y is 1. So you can see we got the same answer, of course. Okay. So you can do elimination twice. Instead of elimination and then substitution, you can do elimination twice. Okay, here's another one. How do we solve the system? And we have 6x minus 22 equals negative y and 3x plus 1 half y equals 11. So if we're going to do elimination, we're going to write it in general form. So we're going to move the y and move the 20. So we get 6x plus y equals 22. And this one, we're going to get rid of the fraction. We're going to times everything by 2. So we get 6x plus y equals 22. If we times this by a negative, so I'm going to copy the first one down here and the second one. And it looks like 0 equals 0. Now, remember we have three cases in this case where the lines are intersecting, parallel, or in solution, same line. This tells me, this tells me it's not intersecting. If it's intersecting, you get X and Y. So that's not it. It's inconsistent or dependent when you get, the, when, you, when X and Y both, both, you know, disappear. Well, it's dependent because this equation is always true. And always true meaning we have infinite solution. If it was 0 equals 5, 3 equals 7, that would be inconsistent and it's going to be this case, okay? Inconsistent when these two values are not equal and then y disappear. Dependent when these two values are equal when x and y disappear. So we know it's going to be infinite solutions and obviously because the two equations are the same. But this is not enough. If you tell me it's an infinite solution, I'm going to say give me one, two, three, since you're telling me there's a lot. So, you, so in intermediate algebra that was enough, in college algebra it's not. So what you have to do, you have to give me the general solution. Of which I could get infinite solutions from that. So how do we get this general solution? Well, you just have to isolate one of the variables. Since it's the same equation, isolate one of them. So subtract 6x to isolate y. So y equals negative 6x plus 22. So a solution will have this general form. x is in the x spot and y, instead of y, 
we're going to put negative 6x plus 22. So if you isolate y, you put x and then whatever you got for y. If you isolate x, you put y in this spot and then whatever you got there for y in that spot. So it's going to be in terms of x, all of them, or in terms of y. Like for, for example, 0, 22 is a solution. If I put a 1 for x, 1 and negative 6 plus 22 is 16 is a solution. You can check. If I put a 2 here, 2, negative 12 plus 22 is 10 is a solution. So you can generate as many solutions as you want by plugging in a value for x. Okay, let's see some applications from page 689. Page 689, number 66. Six eighty nine, number sixty six. It says a boat on a river travels downstream between two points, twenty miles apart, in one hour. The return trip against the current takes two and a half hours. What is the boat speed and how fast does the current in the river flow? So we want two things. So we're talking about rate times time equals distance okay we know that formula the, the the boat is going downstream and then there's return trip okay so let's read this one more time to get what's going on so a boat on a river travels downstream so downstream between two points 20 miles apart so distance is 20 miles in one hour the time is one hour the return trip it's gonna be the same miles right it's going to the same place and returning because it's like the current it takes more time it's two and a half hours of course because it's fighting it's forcing you know it's 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 working against the current what is the boat speed so b is the boat speed and c is the current obviously when you're when, if you want to find the rate going downstream, remember times time equals distance. So to find the rate, it's distance over time. So if you divide 20 miles over an hour, that's the that rate, 20 miles per hour going downstream. And the rate 20 divided by 2.5 is 8 miles per hour going in the, because it's, it's or because it's fighting the current. Now, going downstream, it's not, this is not just the boat. It's boat plus current right because it's going down the current is pushing the boat fa faster and going against or returning it's going to be boat minus current so you get two equations and two variables the bigger number is always a plus the, the smaller number is always a minus and b minus c is eight so add the b's to b is 28 so the boat is going at 14 miles per hour and then they want the current so right there b plus c is 20, 14 plus C is 20, so the current is 6 miles per hour. We got both answers. Now let's go to 70, page 90, another application. Seventy, page 90. A mixture problem. A biologist has two brine solutions, so there's two brine solutions. Uh, first solution and second, let's call them first and second. One containing 5% salt and other containing 20%. So the percentage here is 5% salt and this is 20% salt. How many milliliters of each solution, so X milliliters and Y milliliters, should she mix to obtain? If she mixes them up, she's going to get a mixture which contains both milliliters, the X and Y. To obtain one liter, a liter is a thousand milliliter, okay? One liter is a thousand milliliter of a solution that contains 14% salt. So one is salty, the other is low in salt. She wants to mix them to get somewhere in between 14%. So there are, we need two equations here. So we know that the X 
plus y have to add up to a thousand okay we're mixing x milliliter to y milliliter when we have here a thousand so they have to add up now the amount the amount of pure salt in first solution is five percent of x times x right because if this is a hundred milliliter five percent salt so there's 0 0.05 times 100 which is five milliliter point point twenty of y is going to be the amount of pure salt in the second and should equal the amount of pure salt in the mixture which is 0.14 times a thousand and that's how you get the second so that's 140 that's how you get the second equation and then you solve it so we can do substitution y equals 1000 minus x we take this and plug it in there so 0.05x plus 0.20 times a thousand minus x is 140 0.05x plus uh, 200 minus 0.20x equals 140. So add up like terms. That's 0.05x minus 0.2 is negative 0.15x plus 200 is 140. Let's subtract 200 negative 0.15x is negative 200 so we have 400 milliliters right there 400 milliliters from the first solution which is 5% concentration added to 600 how do I know 600 because they have to add up to a thousand to get 14% of 1000 milliliters and that's it for 10.1 we'll see you in 10.2 soon